Hi everyone, this is Amy or a Little Surprises YT and today, uh, this year, I'm going to show you how to make a blue and white chicken box that is a two-parter. So this, as you can see, fits two of my trouble creations and in here is my zombie boba which is still available on my Etsy shop. It's bigger than the one, the pumpkin trinket boxes I made last year. This is one that I made um, earlier in September that I already sold. I really love how it turned out but since I already made an orange one, I decided I'd make a blue and white one kind of like a Cinderella theme so that I wasn't making the same thing twice. This as you can see right here was the one that I made in 2015 last year. It was a three-parter which means when I took the top off it broke into three different parts. So here I have a clay sphere that I've made using scrap clay. If you have a metal or a glass sphere that is to the size of your liking that's even better. I don't have one so I made one out of scrap clay. I am wrapping aluminum foil around it so that when we make the trinket box it's easier to separate from the clay sphere. Um, and this is how I'm pretty much wrapping it around. I am also smoothing it out by rubbing the aluminum foil against a white piece of paper. Um, and this just kind of smooths it out so it, there's not as many wrinkles. Unfortunately, there will be some wrinkles and that's totally fine. I'm using Original Sculpey Oven Baked Clay. It is really big. You get like, I think a pound for like six bucks, which is a lot cheaper than getting two ounces of poly uh, color polymer clay. Um, I took a little section of it and started rolling it out with a plastic rolling pin. If you have a glass one, you're super cool because I still need one of those. Um, but pretty much I am rolling it out, trying to make it as even and as flat as possible, and then wrapping it around my aluminum foiled sphere. Now here, the way that I'm wrapping it around is kind of like cutting off all the excess so that it's not thicker on one side than the other, and then just rolling it around to smooth it out. Then I took a plastic tool to make indents into the pumpkin sphere to make the texture of the pumpkin. Unfortunately, this wasn't in the middle of the frame, so I do apologize for that. But you can pretty much tell what I am doing. I'm just kind of rotating the sphere and putting lines on it. Then I put some more clay on top for the little stem and I smoothed it out with a plastic tool. And uh, don't worry if it's messy because you can always go in and smooth it out. Just take your time. I just sped up this video so that it wasn't like a 30 minute video for you guys. And then just start um, you know, indenting into the little spaces again. Now here I decided to put in two pieces of wire or like metal pins into the top part of the stem to make my stem more stable. This is kind of like pretty similar to putting dowels or dowers into a very high tiered cake to make sure that it doesn't fall over. Now this next step is totally optional, but I put on some leaves. Now in the one that I made in September, I only put three leaves, but this time I put, I think, five to make kind of like this cute little star. Then I baked this at about 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 minutes. And then after it was all baked, I took a pencil and outlined where I was going to cut the pumpkin in half. Now I didn't want it to make it a straight line, so I made these zigzag lines. And um, I just kind of, you know, drew out where I wanted to cut them. Now here, this is a real time clip of how I was cutting the pumpkin. I took a very sharp blade, a pointed blade, and just cut the pumpkin along the line of where I indented with a pencil. And I did this very slowly. You don't want to do it too fast because trust me, you can cut yourself and just go along with the lines of where you indented or you drew. And over here, as you can see, the as you cut through the pumpkin, it will come off on its own slowly. So don't force it. It will pop up because it's stuck on the aluminum foil and the aluminum foil wants to get off the clay piece too. So here, as you can see, it came off pretty easily. You do have to kind of push it a little bit. Don't, I mean, do be too rough with it, but as you can see, it does come off and then you can just take the aluminum foil off of each inside parts. Now, while you're tearing away at the aluminum foil, you will notice that the texture of the inside of the clay will be bumpy and it's gonna look pulpy, but that's totally fine because the inside of a pumpkin's like that too, right? I actually also used like a really cheap brush that I got from e.l.f. from Target and just brushed away any excess little pieces that were created when the aluminum foil and the clay met one another. 
and I did the same thing with the bottom part. Here is the clay sphere. It's totally fine. It is like, you know, a little messed up, but this is the same size that I used for my BB-8 figurine. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put a link of that down below. Um, but yeah, it is kind of, you know, torn apart, but it's okay. It's still reusable. So here again, I am just tearing apart at the rest of the aluminum foil and cutting away at any little pieces that may have been left behind. And uh, as you can see, it is pretty cute so far. And uh, when you put the lid back onto the trinket box bottom, um, it fits really, really well. Now, I wasn't able to film the entire painting process because I actually painted throughout a series of four days. Um, but here is uh, the first layer of paint. It's white. I painted it like three or four layers of white. Um, because the clay I used was like an off-white color. Then I went in with some metallic silver color um, and it was too dark. So I mixed it with some more white to give it a lighter gray color or silver color. And after that, I went in with some light blue paint into like the crevices of where the pumpkin lines were on both sides. And then afterwards, I started stippling on white paint onto the top to make it look like shimmery and pretty and magical and stuff like that. Kind of like Cinderella's pumpkin carriage, but not really. Um, and then after that, I painted on some, the leaves. Um, I wanted it blue and green. I painted on some gold accents on the white parts. And this is pretty much what it looks like at this point. And then last but not least, I added in some hearts and other line details that I thought would be cute, some polka dots and stuff like that. Oh, and of course, I also painted in the inside. Uh, I painted the inside blue, light blue, just like the lines of the pumpkin. And this is what it looks like before glazing. Um, it's pretty cute, it's matte. Uh, the only thing that's kind of shimmery is like the metallic paints that I use. So the inside is, is metallic blue. The leaves are a little metallic. Um, but after glazing, it actually makes a big difference. So. I glazed with UV resin and the inside where it was bumpy before, it feels flat. So I really recommend using UV resin or resin to glaze um, because regular glaze like polyurethane or Duraclair, it might not give that kind of smooth feel to it. But this is pretty much what it looks like. I'm really happy with it. I don't think I'm completely done with it yet, but for the most part, this is the entire tutorial of my new oven bake pumpkin trinket box. Um, and of course, you can always refer to my previous trinket box video if you want to learn how to make both versions. But this is just the 2016 version, and I like it a lot. And it reminds me of Cinderella, and it's like an upgraded, dainty looking pumpkin trinket box. I'll, I will admit though, I really like the orange one too. But as you can see, inside it fits more than one chubble. Um, last year's only fit one chubble like really tightly, but this year I can put like more than one in there. Um, so I'm super, super happy. And um, this is primarily meant for like jewelry, stuff like that, something small. Um, obviously if you wanted to make this bigger, you could, but like it might not be very stable or like very secure and, and tough because it's clay. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that is pretty much the entire tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. I just wanted to show you some other jack-o'-lantern pumpkin stuff that I made. So I made this Pikachu jack-o'-lantern. I probably showed this in Charm Update already, but yeah. And then I also made this little kitty one and I glazed the inside with UV resin and it fits a little candy bar. So I thought that was really cool. I'll leave all the links down below of anything that I've mentioned today. If it's now down below, just let me know again in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.